right, welcome to another episode of Morelia Python Radio. And yeah, tonight is just uh, me and Owen. We're going to chat about some topics and some things and news of the day in the world. I know we skipped last week. I was yeah. hideously ill. <laughs> you were. You, you had I was sick stuff. for a couple days. Really? And then I had right. some, yeah, and then I had family problems. Right, which, right, right. Right. I had to deal with um, uh, Jim this past weekend. He bought a pig. He bought a pig. He bought a pig. Oh wait, is this the pig that he's? Oh, it's uh... dead, but he bought it. Like he, he, okay. he bought the little pig from the little 4-H group, and then they had it slaughtered. So he comes over to my house. He goes, "I have pork for you." I, dude, I have so much bacon. I don't know what to do. <laughs> like, there's, oh wow, there's a lot of food here. Like, it's I, not a bad spot. To it's be not in. a bad spot to be in. But you know, thank God I have multiple freezers. Like, oh my God. Uh, so that's, I, I'm definitely ill and. You know, then that happens. Uh, yeah. Yep. And then didn't you have? Well, I don't. I don't know if you want to talk about the other, the other <laughs> part of that story, but it's a, uh, it's, you know, yeah. <laughs> Fair but, enough. Yep. <laughs> um, I had. Uh, we're gonna probably talk about you know some things we saw, you know, some updates with yes. what we have going on personally. Um, and I think, uh, I think, I, I forget where I saw this topic. I heard people talking about it, but mm. it was thoughts on outcrossing localities. I think it might have been the Reptile Fight Club or something. And well, like, I, I've been thinking about it a little bit differently when it comes to that. And uh, maybe, no, you know what I thought? I, I heard Billy Hunt talking about it with um on snakes and stogies i think okay so outcrossing and, uh, localities obviously localities are like the worst thing right now because what we have is what we have in the u.s so we're just going to be constantly breeding back generations into each other brothers to sisters yeah. mothers to father like mothers to daughter it, it, it constantly breeding back in so right a brisbane coastal is probably the most the least genetic anything um that like we could possibly think of i i mean diversity is there's nowhere there at all so i thought about taking my brisbane male and throwing it to one of my coastal females this yeah. year because my brisbane female's not ready but right. then i also imagined how many carpet breeders would be on my front lawn with torches and pitchforks when the clutch hit the ground well so I yeah, know. I think I think I think the thought is is that a lot of people would get upset with the fact mm -hmm. that you're breeding a locality to something else, right? And I think if I so let's just say for yep. sake of this discussion uh that it is legal but very very expensive to import locality carpet pythons into the US, right? Okay. Let's just yeah. let's just right, say yeah, for right. sake the, the, of all right. In this fantasy world, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> in our in our perfect world. Yep. Um, I think the idea there would be okay. So if you're going to get locality, you want to try to get a big of you know a group together that that somewhat, so you can have a little bit of genetic diversity in the group, right? Mm -hmm. Um, because to your point, right, you can only inbreed so much. Now, some people will say that inbreeding depression is something that sort of is eventually going to catch up with things and you'll see issues with fertility or things that we may not necessarily like you'll have a, you'll get a clutch here and there, but I think like uh, sometimes maybe we're thinking about it in terms of, Oh, well, I didn't get a clutch this year. You know, it, it is whatever. And we never, I shouldn't say we never, but I, I don't think the go-to is inbreeding. Right. I think right. that there was some thought that, I know we've had various people on and talk about this a little bit. So this is where there's a debate. Some people think it's like you can do it to you can do it a long time mm -hmm. and then maybe you'll have an issue. And then everything breaks, but everything breaks at the same right. time. It's like all of a sudden right. they are born without eyeballs. Their their bottom jaws don't right. work. Their spines are look right. like pretzels. Like that's like everything will break down at once. So I feel that certain species who are island species or even species that are from a almost like i want to call them like landlocked islands like they're, they're they're where they live is so hazardous that they only inhabit like one gorge one little plateau surrounded by desert or something like that those right. species i think it is very very hard to 
or it would be very easy just to keep inbreeding because that's all that we have. That's all that happens in the wild. They, right. there's barely any genetic diversity or anything like that. But in an animal that ranges from, let's say, like Chicago to New York, and you've only got like two animals from this one river basin, and you're bringing them over and you're breeding all those animals together. I think you're going to hit problems much sooner than you would with anything that was say an Island species or something like that. I think, I think, I think maybe herping in, in the U S and, and like, especially when we were in Texas and stuff, yep. sort of like maybe changed my mind a little bit about the whole locality thing. Yep. Meaning that like, you know, some of those alternate guys and gals will be super, you know, um anal about you know oh this came from this this road rock. right and this rock right and it can't in this cut you know and if it came from a different cut i can't cross you it cross it but and it's have, like is yeah. that real like do the snakes i mean obviously snakes must cross the road because a lot of them die on the road right, right. so the idea yeah. that like i i so like it's like oh once we put them in these boxes somehow they never sort of come outside of those boxes so yeah. so i guess my perception of locality is maybe changed a bit right but a bit, yeah. that, that being said right you sort of have the idea that i think the problem where the people that would sort of push back against out crossing localities is like once you out cross a locality uh, it's not the locality anymore right? right i think you have to do it in the way though because the, the problem is the other problem is, is that you're going to take your locality like a Brisbane and you're going to breed it to your carpet python. And the problem is, is that depending on what you're doing and who you got it from, the question marks are there. So are you taking a pure locality coastal and breeding it to a pure coastal to the best of your knowledge? Yes. But what is the best of your knowledge? Yeah, well, <laughs> I think it'd be worse. I think it would, it's not that hard with coastals, though. I think it would be worse with jungles. When, like, let's say something happens and you have the only male gelatin jungle, and yeah. then you're going to outcross them to a female jungle, what would you pick? Because, in my opinion, I think I'd go straight ivory jungle. Right. Right. So I would do that because obviously or hopefully you have a point where you can trace it back as far as you can, which say maybe the nineties, eighties of that animal. Right. But also but you're he, not having things like the yellow and stuff affect the gelatin, but still you're out crossing. And now there's something else you have to deal with, which is the ivory, but grabbing a random jungle that you have had in your collection for years that you think is a pure jungle and crossing it to, I think would just be doing a disservice to it. So I think, I think the, yeah, I sort of like uh, some of yeah. these, some of these. Uh, so like, I, I, I think like, so with the, with gelatin, right. Yeah. You know, you're going to breed it to a jungle and mm -hmm. like, you know, first it's like the gelatin is gelatin because somebody said it was gelatin and you know for all sakes you know you for all another, arguments or whatever you can grab another gonna, jungle from gelatin that doesn't look anything like a gelatin well that, that's, yeah. that's another thing that's right? another thing you know, yeah. i mean you know having seen two of them and then having them and produced them a couple times well yeah what three times so it's, a it's sort of like <laughs> it's more than one <laughs> it's yeah <laughs> it's sort of like uh you know, I don't know. Uh, yeah, they, they, they can, they can have different looks and what's odd is right. So mm. the, the crazy thing is if you look at Nick's gelatins and my gelatins, they look completely different. Like we went different routes with okay. how we were breeding and well, it's going to happen. It, well, yeah. Right. Because yeah. that's the, that's the beauty of carpet pythons, how variability, how much variability they have. Mm. But I guess the thing is, is like, you know, you, you sort of, and I remember when, when, when I bought them with him, it was me and him. That's I think there was one other person that brought in gelatins at the time, mm -hmm. which, you know, I say it all the time. I, I don't understand why that wasn't bigger than what it was. You know, it wasn't yellow. Um, we love the yellow. Yeah, I guess. Um, the freaking gorgeous snakes. I, I you know? do love them. And that's every <laughs> yeah. time I'm over there, I'm like, I could no, no, we 
don't want a pair of. We just yeah, I mean, want to. Yeah. If you're going to do jungle carpet, dude, I don't I mean, want to do you know, jungle carpet. That's the problem. That, that's it's the like jungle it. carpet for I've you. I've already bro. said that. I've said this numerous <laughs> yeah. times. You know what? I should cut down on carpet pythons to make more room for Rick Ruff scales. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, I bought four new carpet pythons. What the fuck happened? Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Know? We'll talk about that. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, I guess the the thing that I'm sort of looking at as far as locality, right? Right. I think to a certain extent that you want to try to preserve that locality. Mm. And I would try to buy it from somebody that has animals that are close. Lo- the like, closest you could possibly get. The yeah. Closest you can get to yeah. those parents. That's where you want to go. Because if you intend on breeding them now, you're going to be a generation. And then you're going to have holdbacks. And then that's, mm-hmm. another, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There, you know, there you go. And next thing you know, you've been breeding the line for 20 years. You pretty I should have asked Nick this when he was on. Right. But um, I don't know if there's issues with the iris because he, he talks about how that's been bred for, you know, basically 20 plus years. Yeah, and been, I wonder, in like, he yeah. he's not, I don't hear anybody talk about it. Um, I know the stuff I have isn't like that. So right. I don't know. Is does it matter? Does it not matter? Maybe because those jungles were outcrossed to begin with. Who knows? Must say how many lines of ivory were there? Because I know Mike had a line of ivory at one point. And so from what I understand, yeah. The one so so this is again where carpet python people get funny. Uh so the original ivory line, mm-hmm. I think there's came from Ryan Young. Okay. And I think there's an animal in that lineage that's quote unquote, <gasps> you know. Oh my God. Not necessarily a question mark. Like, kind of a question mark. Okay. Now, those guys may know more than I do. So if Nick and Ryan, maybe, you know, you know how Nick is, he researches that stuff. And if he has it in his collection, for the most part, most part you know, yeah. I, I don't know of anything that he keeps that is is questionable but in mike's case yeah and this is sort of where i learned this thing is that he has an the, the animal i think it was ted right yep, ted yep, is yep, who yep. i got yep, my yep, ivory from yep. I love that <clears throat> so animal. ted yep came from somebody that supposedly got that animal from ryan but there's no way to prove it okay so because it didn't come through that direction it gets a it's stamp you know, on it. It yeah. gets the old uh no question the, mark the X, stamp. Yeah, the, <laughs> you know the question mark with the with the circle and the how X through it. Yeah. Dare you, how sir. dare you bring this animal? <laughs> Can it go back 18 generations? What? No. <laughs> how dare you put this on my table? Exactly. Um, so that's um I almost but, feel like uh, if you're gonna do locality stuff, you almost need to treat it like it's a brand new morph project. You need well, yeah. animals with the closest you can get to the wild and with very little question marks. Well, I think the thing is, is that I think what the locality people are missing and maybe the whole carpet python community is missing is that's a different bloodline. Yes. And that's why I don't understand why the Russian tigers aren't, you know, there's like a core group of people that are crazy about those things. Everybody else doesn't care. <laughs> and nobody else cares. And it's like, but you guys are always talking about how we don't have stuff to outcross to. So to is. me, if I was going to outcross a Brisbane, yeah, I would go that route Yacobre because Depot. yeah, the quote unquote locality type that it supposedly is <laughs> is closer to Brisbane than say Rockhampton you'd be, or you'd be a Port Douglas. Two localities, it'd be the Yakapuri Deep of Brisbane. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yes. then, you know, who knows what's going to happen as far as like, you know, and then that's another thing. Mm. Are we going to be in the same boat that the Condro people were in? And does it even matter, right? The Condro people were in that boat where it's like, they're, you know, but I think the Condros- early days, everything was a Condro. Right, you right. It together, yeah, you called yeah. it a day. Listen, that's going to happen eventually where we're going to be like, hey, listen, these things are pure. These things are not pure. And then we're all going to lose our goddamn minds. So... Of and then course. I think about it. I think about this, man, and right. it drives me nuts. Why am I so obsessed with it being pure? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how that got in my brain, but it's there, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't like looking I mean, at an albino, looking at albino bread lie. I'm like, it's gorgeous. It's white and it's red and it can't come here. Why can't it come here? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So I think the, Who makes the thing these rules. Yeah. Why do we get in our brain and do this? You know, yeah. I think, I think though that I think a lot of like these thoughts that have been going through my head have been coming from listening to some of the discussions that 
Justin and Chuck have been having on the Reptile Fight Club. So right. when they're on there and they're talking about these things, it makes me think like, huh, you know, and I think Chuck brought up a great point, right? His point was, you know, and obviously I know Chuck is more of a, a purist type guy, right? And he's not really a morph guy. Right. But the thing of it is, is that he's looking at it as, okay, so if you have this carpet python and it looks insane and it's a, you know, um, a jungle, you know, cross of some sort, mm -hmm. who cares? Like, what? why is that animal not now? It's like, no, I can't have you. You, you are this. trash, trash well, animal. I don't know. Well, I mean, no, no, but we've talked about this, you know, it seems like, say, like the Green Tree Python people have the um, designer, yeah, carp green trees. So they have the designer green trees. But the worst thing that happens to a green tree, if it's not that magical one that comes out with like black and blue scales, is it turns yeah. into a green snake, a green right. tree python, something that's still wanted and right. kind of accepted. The right. worst thing that happens when you breed carpets is you get the like two or three of the morph things that you really wanted but then you get other stuff in there that might resemble something that's pure so i guess there's a lot of the, that whole like witch hunt stigma kind of stuff of that well clearly what's going to end up happening is because you've bred all this dirt crap and like you know this jungle bread lie whatever the hell that kind of right. resembles a coastal now my coastals are going to suffer in price which is not necessarily true because right. if you want a project that I'm working for. If you want a line of coastals that I'm working with, you come to me. If you right. don't come to me and you expect to get the same quality of animal off of a dealer table, you're an idiot. Because <laughs> yeah. that's just the way it goes. And and I've had people come up to me and say that they've bought a bread lie from somebody who bought the bread lie from somebody who bought the bread lie from me. Can I give them lineage charts? And I go, I can't help you because you can't prove that's my animal. Right. And here's the other thing. Like, yeah, I've been thinking a lot about this stuff, right? Yeah. So, like with bread lie, yes. nobody can, nobody ever nobody questions no one the ever pure, gives right? No. Nobody cares nope. that you cross the Harris with a it's, you know a bread I mean? lie. it's just like I want a bread lie. <laughs> yeah. And here it's like, here you go, bread lie. You know, I'd like it to be more orange or more right, red well, or whatever the this, case would be. This, this, yeah. Okay, well, this line throws this, you know, or when we cross this Harris and you know. Uh, price we get this or if we lasik and and harris we get you know whatever it would be mm. and um i i don't understand I, I don't know man I, it's 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 weird how we sort of think about these things but like i have a diamond yeah uh coastal cross that was from the bumblebee tuna right. and i gotta tell you man that's one of the coolest snakes. It's a pretty animal. I love it. Yeah. So nobody will like it because it's a diamond coastal cross, right? But they'll like it if they, if they don't know what it is and they just see it, they'll think it's a cool snake. Oh, they'll think it's cool, exactly. no doubt. So because it's, it's the, when you drop it's that the perfect on them. mix, right? right? It's the colors of a coastal carpet with the pattern and tipping and all that of shit a of a diamond python, you know? So it right. immediately looks like a diamond python, but different, right? Mm -hmm. And in the wild, they cross. Right. So, I mean, so there is an integrade zone. Yes, there's integrade zones. And, you know, so for people that don't understand the integrate zone and stuff like that, basically, you know, you don't have like the diamonds on the, the one side of the field and the, the no, coastals are right. on the other side of the there's field. Some and dude like, walking around the piece one of the diamonds. Nope, 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 nope. You yeah. can't go over here. Like, I don't like it so cold. I'm going <laughs> over there. I want to be a little warmer. And, you know, hello. Yeah. And, that, you know, so but if again, in our scenario here, if Australia is, uh, you know, shipping out locality stuff that's captive born and bred and blah, 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 you know, okay. And I go and I, now I want one some people, I think in Australia, they call them rainforest diamonds. Oh, sweet um, God. You know, <laughs> there's, the, and, and, you know, it's weird. Like when you see them, you see if like, if you want to see wild carpets, if you go on Facebook or YouTube and mm -hmm. you follow like snake catchers. Yeah of australia you'll see a lot of that shit right and you'll see these crazy looking diamonds that are like again they sort of like well that really doesn't look like a diamond that we would have in the states right and i think like right. our our which is which we'll get to about the, the the book uh coming out soon but like i think the thing that's really cool about this upcoming book that justin and nick are going to be mm -hmm. putting out is the fact that they've sort of focused all the natural history on 
you know, the pictures that are in those sections are going to be all wild carpets, which is awesome. You know? yeah. Right. So like, I think that's, that's awesome. in as far as like, I think maybe like newer people coming into carpets, will see that there's a variety in the wild. I mean, right. some of the crazy shit that, that, you know, we get sent and all it's like, Oh, look at this. And you're like, Holy hell, man. Like I would kill for that. Oh yeah. You know? That's yeah. a gorgeous jungle. Not where I found it. What? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, right. Yes. Downtown so, Brisbane. I don't. What? <laughs> yeah, it's so right. And if you are going to, you know, again, I I understand that this is going to be like sacrilege, and people are going to be up in arms or whatever. Yeah. But like, if you took a Brisbane and you bred it to a diamond, Ugh. right? <laughs> because Ugh. they naturally integrate in the wild type of thing, right? Yeah, yeah. And you produce that look of that diamond uh, coastal, and like. Even I even think purist would be all over it if you could give them a legit locality of a diamond coastal integrate. Mm -hmm. You know they would. I know yeah. they would. I would. You know. So if you said to me, "Here's the GPS coordinates of this, and this is this," you would be like, "Hell yeah, man!" Yeah, it, it's. I, I don't know if it's part in our head because this what we got in the states is what we got. Like if we yeah, had, if we had one, I get that. Well, if you had a pair of imbricata, just a straight up pair. Of, yeah, I'm. I know. I'm going straight for this. Yeah. So if you had one pair of imbricata, would you really want it if somebody took it and crossed the imbricata to a coastal that they had here? Like if the only babels that were available were no fifty. I exactly wouldn't. why? Because and I don't know why. It, well, <laughs> I it think takes, it's just takes it out of the it, naturalist, you know? right? Yeah, it's like you want you want which. You know, sort of, and when you start to have these conversations with yourself, mm -hmm. you you start to, at least for me, it's sort of. Um, I know you're probably going to make fun of me, right? But because of all the stress and life and all this stuff, I'm like, I'm getting older. My blood pressure is high all the time. You know, I'm listening to my trainer Nipper over there in the UK, and he's telling me that, uh, you know, he he had mentioned to me before about doing a med like meditating like even if it's just 10 or 15 minutes right. a day or whatever yeah. right so like i know you're not supposed to think about anything <laughs> but like it clears my mind so that later on i start to think about these things i just imagine it's you're funny as a like, sort of bamboo clear mat, your mind going and like, like clear your mind and then it's like <laughs> imbricata <What>? no <laughs> like so i snap open damn it like, <laughs> yeah that's about right um but I think it's like, I think, right? So for me, it goes back to why do I want that animal that's a representation of that wild animal, right? Yeah. I want it because really at the end of the day, the goal of me keeping reptiles is so that I have that piece of nature right. in my house. Right. And it's sort of like why I've come to this realization that I'd rather be a naturalistic keeper than a tub keeper. And it has nothing to do with as far as like, I think it's bad to do this. Yeah, but, like, you do whatever spent, you yeah. want, man, you know, and you, you do it is what, what it is. Do. Yeah. It, it, but for me, the joy yeah. is, is that to come into the room and see like, you know, oh man, this is just like we were at, uh, you know, botanical gardens yeah. and looking at the Darwin carpet in the tree. Yeah. It, it, you know, it, like when it comes down to it, I, I would rather have the Owen Pelly Python one, yeah. just one. So I could look at it. And set it up and have fun so with it. So make sure you get a and male then, and, and I'll when, get a female. There you go. <laughs> and then when people are like, aren't you going to breed it to something? I don't need to. Well, you could always breed it to this for why? I don't care. I have what I want. It's right. It's, right. it's, it, it's, it, 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 you can see the lines are drawn in certain areas and things like that. Uh, for me, it kind of comes from like with, with the whole zoo thing that I did. You were supposed to breed animals to try to keep the species going. You know, but you weren't supposed to be like, well, the Bengal tiger needs to be breeding with something. Put the lion in there. Like, and that's not where you want to do that. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I get the idea of that if we're going to just go for it for just straight up designer stuff, that's fine. It's just that I never felt the need to do that because I never wanted to be bogged down with a ton of babies that were the afterthoughts of trying to get to a certain morph project or whatever. Um I would say that it's weird because certain species, like you said, aren't affected by it. Like I do not see a shit ton of bread like coastal crosses running around here. And it's mm -mm. And every once in a while you see somebody who's like ignorant, who goes like, I want to breed my jungle carpet to my bread lie. And then people are like, why? And yeah. nobody has a good defense for that because it's not like there's any kind of enhancement to either of the animals by mixing a bright red animal to a yellow and black animal. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. So, sometimes I think it's the, sometimes I think with breeding, it's the mad scientist, you know, what can there. I create, yeah. you know? And I, I think it comes to, you know, we all want to be recognized for something. Mm -hmm. And even if it's that, you know, you're, you're, you're doing something that everybody's, you know, like a rough scale chondro or something like that. God. <laughs> or a rough scale carpet or something, you know, well, whatever it, it would be. Yeah, it's, it's like, like uh, okay, yeah, you can do it. And that's all well and good. But like, and then I think about this other argument that we throw out all the time, mm -hmm. right? And it's the old like, oh, well, somebody's going to misrepresent it down the line. Well, <laughs> you have, have no you ever bought a misrepresented animal? Me? No. Right. I right. haven't. I haven't either. So, so listen, it's up to I, us to I've sort of edge. I've bought misrepresented animals in my younger years, but yeah, then so I got I. smart because I started talking to people and realizing that Correct. I was lied to or the dude had no fucking idea what they were talking Correct. about. So now, if you want an animal, if right. breeding coastal carpets is important to you, you right. know the people to call. Right. And you shouldn't, you shouldn't, if you made the decision to go to the dealer table and run a gamble on something you bought there, and it turned out to not be true or to be a cross, then you deserve what you got. But that sort of applies with everything, right? It so does. for instance, right, if you have, you know, I guess this might be the difference between colubrid breeders and python breeders, right? Because right. colubrids, I don't know, man, they kind of got it hands down on color and stuff. Like as they mature into adults, they kind of like get better, right? My, In my, my opinion. king rats were like this creamy colored when they were babies. Right. And then as they grew, they got that black and yellow and stuff like that. And there was a certain point. It's almost like with Savus, where you're like, stop, like, don't, yeah, don't, don't grow anymore. anymore. Don't do it yeah. anymore. I love They're you perfect. where you are. And then they would keep going like, no. So it's call your, but so it's like, they do get bigger. They do get brighter and stuff like that. And there's not an insane amount of a color change, you know, looking at the babies yeah. right now, I'm <clears> starting <throat> to get a few of my babies from this year to have their second and third sheds where right. now color is starting to show up and you're like, okay, that's an exanic because its eyes are white and it's blue. Like right. it's that thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think though, like, you know, I, I think, of, I, I think when you're coming into carpet Python, I, well, I think that more and more people are coming into carpet Python sort of have a better base than we did in the past. Right. Oh, you know, yeah. There, yeah. You know, you got all this information that's out here mm -hmm. um, from, from, so many different sources and i think at this point people understand the that it's a complex mm -hmm. you know and a, you know multiple species and subspecies and stuff and if you want to be i i think we i think that we have always approached it in the mindset that we're sort of setting people up to breed and right. not really focusing on the you know if I'm just going to keep a pet type of thing. Right. And I yeah. think if you're going to breed is where those things come into play. Right. But mm -hmm. I think if you're going to be a breeder, you should probably be looking at it a little serious, a little, a, a, with a little more, you know, detail, you right. know, uh, meaning that like, if you're going to breed coastal carpets and you know that, that if you're going to sell just straight coastal carpets, you might be able to sell one or two to people as a pet. But if somebody's looking for a legit coastal carpet, you gotta have they're going to come, yeah. they're going to come to you and ask like, okay, well, what line is this? Or, mm -hmm. you know, what's mm -hmm. the story on these or whatever the case would be. And if you don't know, it doesn't make the animal less, less. pretty, right? It, it doesn't just, make the animal less of a carpet Python, but I guess it just puts a question for. mark Yeah. so that if, when you go to produce it, mm -hmm. it makes it a little harder to, to sell. You know, right. or if, if somebody, again, you know, you know how trends go mm -hmm. and trends, will, you know, locality stuff will be cool. And then the morph stuff will be cool. And then the locality stuff will be cool. And then it the goes, subspecies, it goes you know forth. what I mean? You know, it, it's it, all cyclical. You know, fringe you know? species stuff is cool right now. People love animals that are hard to breed and aren't readily available. The rarer stuff is cool right now. And, and I wonder sometimes if people are doing that just because they think that somehow that's going to give them some type of credibility Maybe. or if are Maybe. they doing it because they really love 
the species or subspecies. I, I, would, or say a, I would say it's a, or a mix of both. A, yeah, mix of both. I would say people maybe kind of want to want this kind of like the species, but they want to have something that they can put a name on them that they can say like, "I produced these, and these are hard to produce." And that's kind of wanting to be their claim to fame. It used to be, "I made this morph," which. Right. The problem is, is that with, with breeding snakes, it's weird because nobody becomes like a, you don't see some guy who's like, I wanted to be a breeder of German shepherds. So what I did is I went on Craigslist and I bought everything that looked like a German shepherd. We right. buy my AKC right. brand right. German right. shepherds. Everybody's right. like, no, why? Because none of these, th half these things aren't German shepherds and half of them right. aren't, none of them are AKC or whatever. So if, if you want to breed carpets and are serious about it, get the ingredients from people that you know is the quality stuff and the stuff that you can kind of get behind. And then if you want to have your Frankenstein project, do it, but at least know what you're putting into it. Right. Like I have the, the ocelot downstairs that I bred with the, the striped jungle for this year. I know what I'm doing. She's an ocelot. So I know she's a coastal jungle and he's right. a jungle. That's right. it. Right. And I'm selling them as what they are. You know, right. they got a little jungle bit of percentage. Jags. Yeah, jungle jags. And also a lot yeah. type jungle jags. That's it. Right. And yeah. that's all we're gonna do. I I guess, you know, people would probably I, I think if you're into the morph or you like the way a specific morph looks, I don't know if you I necessarily care. care about all yeah. that, right? You just I want the a nice example. But yeah. like you know, you're not going to be like, oh, my God, this has coastal carpet in yeah. it. Get it away. Nobody's looking. <laughs> you know? Nobody's asking how much percentage of coastal blood is in a jungle jag. They're like, how much yeah. percentage of coastal? Does it matter? <laughs> like, it doesn't, right. it doesn't get any better that way. Yeah. Um, it goes the other direction. So it's just one of those things where it seems like some things are exempt, some things they care about, some things they don't. And it's hard to kind of gauge. But if you're happy doing what you're doing... Who, who gives a shit have fun with it but don't expect don't expect to breed something and have some and everybody beating down your door to your house like the guy who bred the uh bolens python to the carpet python right did it and he did it under this saying that he needed to see if his bolens python would produce sperm it, okay right. I almost would prefer if he tried to breed it and got Bolin's eggs. I think it would have been a bigger feather in his cap to get Bolin eggs than it would be to get a uh, Bolin's carpet cross, but he still produced something and it's still something weird. And if some people, I remember, uh, I forget who it was, was it Zach? Who was like, I think I just won it just because it's a dark black mean looking snake. And it'd be cool to set up in a thing. And it's like, hey, yeah, yeah. He always wanted one of them. If yeah. that does it for you, then what the, all right. But you know, you can't expect to you can't expect to be requesting like Bolin's Python prices for the carpet Bolin's cross. Yeah, it's so funny how we set up our camps, right? And once we're in that tribe, can't leave it. We we can't we you know yeah. it's almost like you're doing something bad to the tribe if you say you know like yeah I would keep the Bolin's carpet cross is no problem set it up real nice make it look like Papua New Guinea it would be awesome it it, and, it well. <laughs> <laughs> then you feel you, you feel all dirty inside you know you're like oh no but, but now they, but that's the thing like i almost feel like you'd be selling yourself short like well if your dream is to set up a bolens python in this in this big enclosure and make it look like papua new guinea and you settle for a colines python i, I mean <laughs> yeah. like come on dude like i understand it sucks my favorite snake is still 1200 goddamn dollars <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they won't drop in price. God damn it! Which, it, which is good, I guess, if you're I selling good them. Good and bad, <laughs> like but not good if you're buying them. Listen, I if rough scales dropped to two hundred dollars, I'd have twenty. All right, like it would just be, I'd be happy yeah. with my bumpy carpets, my bumpy chondros. Anyway, but that's, I, I almost that's, I would, I kind of see that where it's like, I, dude, I could take my team more pythons and breed it to my retic. Why would I do that? Why right. would I do that? <laughs> right. You know, there's no, yeah. there's no upshot to that. I would much rather breed that, but certain things when morphs get involved and things are readily producible, that's when people start straying off to the side. Like nobody's trying to breed a black face white lip with a gold face white lip. Cause no, 
they, they, the, uh, the two themselves aren't readily produced. Nobody's trying to take a ring python and breed it to a black face white lip. What's the right. point of that? But right. in certain things with carpets, when you have an animal that has a paint job, that's yeah. when stuff starts going a little bit crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, you know, and, but even still remember, I mean, in the early days when it was the jungles where the, like sort of the morph du jour, you know, as far as carpet pythons would go, you had Jungle, the stripe, jungles and were, then you had jungles, you know, right. it's like, wow, check out this look at this jungle, you know, check out the look <laughs> of this jungle. Well, that's the thing. It's jungles were so bred into being the black and yellow before the morphs even hit. So we never even had a point where you could try to breed different colors and fun stuff into jungles aside from like ivory everything was black and yellow before the first jungle morph was zebra yeah i mean i i like the black and yellow don't get me wrong it's definitely eye-catching for sure but i gotta be honest i mean i also like the dirty green yeah wild jungle carpet you know i mean that's cool too i would like to keep them as well you're talking about it right now with with your um gelatins looking different than nick's right and that's just you you guys went on this separate like little bit of a why because of this the way your animals look you could yeah. have done that with multiple jungle species or multiple jungle projects same thing way you could have done that with multiple coastal projects but everything got towed into morph so people were working on striped jungles and then zebras and jags and everything else showed up and we've bred the hell out of them and now <laughs> we're starting to get back to into people are trying to work on the striped jungle again because they really want a striped jungle. Yeah, I know. I don't, I don't understand why that hasn't pro- been produced, but you know, I, well, it, it's possible. Uh, it's going to take time. Yeah. I think, I don't know why. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Maybe they, maybe a lot of the people that keep jungles just don't like stripes. I mean, there are it, people out there that don't like stripes. They like well, banded. I, I think stuff, a stripe know? project with with an animal that's necess- that's banded is going to be hard because you're going to have to breed to get the stripes. You're going to have to hold back everything that has the stripes. You have yeah. to raise them up and breed them. It's going to take a considerable project, which means you're looking at maybe 10 animals, something like that, where you're crossing into each other off to the side. And then you're always going to be concerned that the second you outcross, you lose the stripe. Yeah. So there's I going think, to be a lot of that. Yeah. And you're going to have to get to the point where that, that, you know, I think with some tiger stuff, mm-hmm. you know, Balin has been producing them for so long. And that line is so strong. If you, if you mix it with something that's banded, but may not nest, but has that in its background. And then you put it with a striped animal, you're going to produce some killer stripes. I mean, there are also a lot of coastals out here that have tiger in their background somewhere. Right. So they end up throwing striped animals. And then there were a lot of coastal base animals that came in that threw stripes. So, Yeah, it happens. You know, I'm going to be the first one that takes tigers and makes them banded tigers. I'll make a fortune. <laughs> you mean the way tigers Does, really mean, are? Mean they look like, normal? <laughs> <laughs> like you mean like a normal coastal? Yes, it'll yeah. be a banded tiger. Excellent. I'll slap my name on it. It'll be excellent. <laughs> yes. What? Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think I think the other thing. I I think my uh, thought is is that you know, like gelatins, for example, right? I'll, I'll go back to that. Mm-hmm. I I will produce gelatins, but I think at some point <clears throat> I might, you know, use that to outcross something because it's a different okay. bloodline of jungle. An IJ project? No, 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 no. Oh, okay, no. Right. It still would be a jungle <laughs> jungle carpet. But I guess you know. But like, what's what would be weird is, is that it, like what jungle carpet what would, would you, you do? breed it yeah. to? You know, I mean, I know people are going to go some, you said it earlier, the ivory thing, right? I mean, that's a, that's sort that's of a no brainer. That's what I would do. You know, I you sort of have be, this white snake yeah. and a sort of white snake, yeah. <laughs> you know, I would almost be tempted to see if somebody took like an ivory zebra to see if you could get some kind of, zebra that had some of the gelatin color like those purples and stuff if they popped up in yeah. a kind of busy zebra pattern um i would be interested to see that i'm not gonna do it so uh, yeah i think I the other feel like yeah. there's a bunch of like nobody wants to be the first guy to take a gelatin and breed it to a zebra and nobody wants to be the first guy to take a brisbane and throw it to a jack 
Well, I think Paul did. I think Paul I was, produced, about, I was about to say that that happened already. <laughs> like that. Paul, yeah, Paul produced gelat and zebras, but I don't know if I would call them gelat and zebras. Not yet. I think if you cross more gelatin, I would never them, call them gelat and zebras. Well, no, if you took the first breeding and you produced a, gel, you'd say you took a gelatin to a zebra and you got zebras, and you took that zebra and you bred it to a gelatin, and you took that baby and you bred it to a gelatin. Wouldn't you eventually get to the point where you have a zebra that has crazy kind of gelatin colors? And doesn't look anything like the gelatin zebra you produced three generations ago. Yes, but I would not call it a gelatin zebra. I wouldn't. What would you and call I think it? my think I would just call it a zebra. Yeah, but that there's nobody buys that. You know, I don't care. That's no, <laughs> you know, like you're, I don't, you're I don't missing the care. Here. <laughs> I know, like, but I'm saying, like, I think I get what you're saying, right? This right. is a so so. What we're saying is, is that when you put the name ploy. like gelatin <laughs> zebra on it, you use you're trying it. To sell it, right? Right. Yes. You're correct. So it's not about trying to be accurate. It's what not is a about... red hypo coastal check? Right. Okay. So at least we're being honest and not straight. Red, it's you not know hypo what I mean? It's right. Okay. Right, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. I just want to know we're being we're being yeah. straight. Well, you know, you got to understand that that's where it comes into it. If you bred your Brisbane, if you outcrossed your Brisbane, what would you call them? Brisbane's? If I outcross my Brisbane, if see, took, I think that's where people Brisbane, get confused. If right. I have a Brisbane yes. and I breed it to a Port Douglas, oh my I have God. a coast. You went further. One I, at a time. One at a time. If you took the Brisbane and right. bred it to a coastal, let's say like a tiger, okay. what do you call the babies? Tigers. Okay. What about the ones that aren't striped? Coastal carpets. Okay. Good. That's what, that's what you should probably do. Other people, <laughs> okay. Other people are gonna say Brisbane's, like outcross Brisbane's or something along those lines. But I think that's the problem I have with this, and I think this is where the people on the side of the locality for localities mm -hmm. have a problem because once you, I think people think I forget who I was talking to, but they were sort of telling me this, and they're like, "Well, if I keep breeding the gel, if I keep breeding the gelatin back, eventually it'll be gelatin again." No, 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 no. no. <laughs> it doesn't work that way, man. You can't. And I think this is, <laughs> that's why I say that I think that it's confusing for people because when you say a gelatin zebra, you're sort of implying that gelatin, right? You say an ivory yeah. zebra. Yeah. I'm on board with it because it's ivory, it's ivory zebra. And it's a zebra, yeah. right? It's a black and white zebra. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. But when you say gelatin zebra, to me, I think. It's I get what you're saying and I right. get why people are saying it. Right. But to but. me, it loses the gelatin. It's gone. Right. It's not there. Right. It's, you it's basically it your zebra, and then when people ask, you can tell them it has zebra. gelatin yes. parents. It's fine. Right. But that isn't what sells. <laughs> <laughs> what sells is the fact that I have an outcrossed Brisbane. And well, no wonder I can't sell snakes. <laughs> Brisbane, and you can breed it to your Brisbane, and now you have Brisbane's. Uh -uh. I know, I know that. I, yeah. I know, and you right. know, and I agree right. with you, but right. that's the thinking. What yeah. people, that's why people are so sketchy and, and worried about outcrossing is because the second you outcross, it's a coastal. And you can't right. take it back and breed it to your Brisbane's because then you've you've lost the Brisbane. And that's not what people want. People want Brisbane. I think it's sort of like making chocolate milk, right? If you have milk and you have chocolate, right? If you just keep pouring milk into the cup, you're it's always going to have milk. But as soon as you pour even a tiny bit of chocolate into the cup, now you have chocolate milk. It'll I never mean, be milk again, how, how and it'll never this, be chocolate well, again. How big is this cup? Because if I put a whole gallon of milk in a little drop of Hershey syrup, I bet you I could skate by. But it's like... <laughs> yeah, I know we knew that use that analogy a lot. A I was, I was just thinking about it where it's like, oh, right. the cloudy water, but if I keep pouring water in it till it all <laughs> overflows, right. eventually and I'm going to be back to... Ah, yes, it's perfect drinking water now. <laughs> what I right. did is just kept pouring the water in. It's, yes. You're, you're, you can't get rid of it. It's there. Yes. The problem there. Is, is that if you took something and said they were outcross Brisbane's and somebody took them and bred them, they're right. going to try to pass the babies off as Brisbane's. Just like how if you took a gelatin <sighs> yeah, zebra, if you took a gelatin zebra, which we already know now, 
is a a gelatin mixed with a zebra and you bred it to a gelatin. Anything that doesn't come out as a zebra, somebody's going to try to sell as a gelatin, not an outcross gelatin, not whatever the hell, a gelatin. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how you problem. fix that problem. I don't I don't know how, you know, because I see I see both sides of it and I don't know You don't I don't know how you you, you don't. There's no way to stop it. There's you no know? way to stop it because then there's the there's the we don't outcross and eventually these locality projects that we have just fold in on themselves or something happens and then the locality's gone forever. I mean, how long did it take for the Yakapori yeah. Depot to get totally decimated? Not long at all. Couple generations, two generations. Yeah. yeah. And now we have to build it back up again. We slowly, slowly claw our way back up. And yeah. that's just the way it goes. So, but if these are things that are important to you, you should know where to go get them. You shouldn't trust, you know, what is it? Uh, this, I want to say it's a like triple L or somebody is constantly throwing up carpet pythons and stuff like that. And it's like Brisbane, like, is it <laughs> like, you know, I, yeah. I don't, or, or, or uh, yeah. HCQ or a bunch of other yes. crap like that. It's whatever. Like, yeah. It, it, it's like, if, if that's the people that you're like, I trust, and this is where I will buy, what are you doing? Like, why aren't you going yeah. directly to the source? It's like, Oh, I heard NPR talking about, uh, you know, HCQs this week. Yeah, oh. Buy, oh my Make God. Those all HCQs. Come on, you know? man. Uh, okay. Yeah, listen to what good. we said. We said the HCQ is gone, and all of a sudden, pure ones pop up on King Snake. Are well, you serious? I tell this to Rob all the time. I find yeah. that like either I say things that in my head sound different than what they say when they come out into the podcast, yeah. or people just don't listen and they take these little chunks of what I'm saying. Like yeah. when when I sort of change the whole thought of like being a being all about morphs, right? Mm-hmm. And like I'm not saying. I never once said, and I actually, I said multiple times, I am not Mm anti-morph. I like morphs. I Mm -hmm. think they're cool. Mm -hmm. I just, it's just not where I'm at personally. Right. And I'd rather have a smaller collection that I can enjoy rather than trying to chase, you know, whatever it would be. Does that mean that I won't breed morphs? Hell no. Does that mean that I'll never get a cross carpet again? No, that doesn't mean any of that, you know, because like mm-hmm. I said, once the book comes out, I'll probably open a page, you know, 426 and I'll see some crazy carpet and I'll be like, God damn, that's cool. I gotta buy sort that, of, yeah. yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, so but people heard me sort of like because I, I'm not gonna be focused on it anymore. It's like I'm I don't like it anymore. No, mm-hmm. I, I love all of that shit, but you know, when you have limited space and and limited, you know, time, uh, mm-hmm. you sort of have to make cuts, right? Yeah. Sort of do. like, like making cuts for <laughs> rough scales, rough scale pythons, all the rough scale pythons. Yeah. Speaking of crazy morphs, <laughs> um, <laughs> they, Paul produced this hypo granite zebra. <laughs> That is just nuts. <laughs> Hypo granite zebra. Hypo granite zebra. Right. Well, which it it looks like it's made of rock. Like it is. Yeah, insane. that's a cool looking snake. I like that a lot. Oh and, yeah, one, is one coming? You buy it already? Oh no 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 no. <laughs> no. Maybe was, maybe one day I might produce something like that. I don't yeah. know. But young Eric would have young foolish eric would have been all over this thing but yeah, yeah it, it looks like he's made a freaking sandstone it's gorgeous that's a cool snake i wonder what it would look like as an adult that one uh, clearly had a shed so <laughs> we don't have to worry or about or that at least but, two i mean it looks like a big baby yeah so it's very cool awesome and uh in other news um don patterson is crushing it with his uh <laughs> Timor Python babies. Yeah. You know, I, I had, I mentioned something on his post about, uh, how many, yeah, he's got to be up there. Yeah. I know he said it not as much as Nick and Ryan, but he's got to be pretty, pretty close. I want to say, I mean, he's five babies out of that clutch, which I don't care. One baby would be enough for me, but that's insane. I love baby Mm -hmm. Timors. And then I don't know the gentleman, 
um, but I know he was on um, Brandon Wheeler's uh, YouTube channel. But mm-hmm. um, he produced Malukins. Yep, you got you got Malukin eggs, which is what kind of world are we living in today? Where it's right. like Halma Harris Malukins. It's like, oh god, it's nuts. It kind of, you know, what we thought was impossible. So, you know, when we started NPR and like the dream to have these species mm-hmm. and now you see people producing them. I think the thing is, man, if you want to get in that in that game where you're producing these rare things and, yeah. you know, you want it, that's what you want to do. then you just have to have them in a small collection. Yeah. And some yeah. patience. And I bet you you would produce them eventually. Yeah. You know? Um. I think when you have a big collection, you're not as you get, focused you get in spaced out. And it's also the problem is, is that when you have multi-species collection, you're not yeah. focused on like, you know, what is it? This is my third year trying with Vietnamese blue beauties because I'm just throwing jello at the colibrid wall. And I'm like, I'm keeping them like I keep everything else. And this is my second. This will be my third year with Kribo and I'll keep getting her slugs. And it's like, all right, if I actually sat down and bogged into it i could probably figure it out but i'm just you know yeah yep i think it becomes it becomes tough when you're doing it it, it's one thing if you're doing stuff from the same area Mm -hmm. you know but when you're doing things from completely different places completely different climates yeah that that becomes tough it really becomes, especially if you're trying to do it all in one room, it really, right. And that's, you gotta, really becomes, and that's, you gotta start splinting in the collection, taking animals yeah. here, there and sideways. Um, I am probably this weekend going to go to Lowe's and do that, cut that hole in my team horse cage so that they can go back go to and see forth. each other whenever they want. Um, right. So how many do you have now that project? 2.2. 2. 2.2. 2. Nice. Yep. Yep. Okay. And I'm, trying to push the old younger pair a little bit more, which then it just comes down to it too. It's like, all right, so I got 2.2 team wars. Which ones do I like more? The team wars or the olives? Cause that'll eventually become an argument there or the team wars of the white. Lips. Um, what would you pick right now? I think Probably a pair of olives would right? go. I think a pair of olives would go. Yeah. I got, two I, point, I got 2.2 point. I got 2.2 olives and only one female's producing. So, <laughs> it's like Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, make the cut. Next year though, if cuz I'm giving that one female olive And then you know you're going to I know send she's going to breed. She's going to breed and then I'm going to be like, "Fuck. <laughs> fucking goddamn." <laughs> then I'll be like, "All right, all right, new new plan. Bigger house." <laughs> like and that's, right. that's yeah. where it always ends up going cuz then also I want to set up the white lips the same way I got the team more set up. Right. Right. So there, you know, man, it's. Yeah. <laughs> I can't get her to get rid of the tortoise. Cause then I could have put more cages there, but that, that ship has sailed sadly. So. Yeah. You're locked in with that one, man. You're going to be, you're going to be willing that one to your children. <laughs> I have to God. <laughs> and I have to have children. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> yeah. Young Owen is going to be saying, uh, you know, why does my dad have this stupid, stupid turtle? tortoise? Turtle. I didn't want it either. Yeah. It's not a turtle, kid. <laughs> tortoise, you know better. How dare you? How it's dare gonna you? Ho- it's going to get, get out of my house. Again. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm. But it's just, it's, it, you know, it, it's just one of the things where you got to make the cuts where, like, I would, I really wanted this year. I'm like, oh, I got a pair, I got a pair of my ring python. And I got a pair, um, the Dunai. And I got a pair, um, I think that's it. I think I just wanted another Maclots Python because that project annoys me so much. <laughs> like, yeah, you you got to produce them so fucking much. <laughs> like every Get rid female, of <laughs> every female Mac I have, something horrible happens. Like I was cruising with that one I got from Dennis, and she was three years old, and then she got cancer. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah, man. And then it's every, sort of it yeah. just sucks so hard. It's sort of like uh before we started the show, um, I had to go pick up um a pair of Queensland water pythons. Mm. And um another project that's a this will be the third <laughs> oh, no. group of them that oh. I got. Yeah. And 
I can't for the life of me figure it out. So I, I've gotten some from Nick. I've gotten mm. some from Ryan. Everything was great. And then all of a sudden, dash crash. Yeah. And a couple of them, I think it was probably, I think it was probably feeding. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I'm really sort of like trying to to dial in that type of thing. And I, yeah. I you know, I just yeah. think of like, dude, I, so there's this company um, and Alan Stevens shared it with me mm-hmm. and uh, I sent it to you guys today, but they oh, sort of the, like they make the naturalistic. Uh, yeah. Um, like the vivarium thing, right? Yeah. What, I can't think of the name of the uh, shit. What did I do with it? Let me try. Let's see. Uh, it's vivarium works vivarium works yeah yeah some really 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 amazing looking shit you know and um i don't know man just just uh so i'm thinking of like man if i could make an enclosure that sort of looks like fog dam and that yeah, be you cool. know, like that where be cool. you, you know what I mean, like that mm-hmm. whole like yeah, you know that rotted log that was mm-hmm. there where you guys were kind of like fishing it out of that mm-hmm. log. It's, oh, and had a hundred and six fever, fever, and was like I'm I'm still not entirely <laughs> sweating sure in the happening. jungle. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> mosquitoes are landing on them and biting them and dying, dying, <laughs> just like <laughs> ah. Uh, <laughs> Be, but uh they left me alone i was too hot for them to land on yeah, yeah. but it was <laughs> like they burned up on impact <laughs> uh but Still uh not entirely sure we went to australia you guys let me just <laughs> you guys just let yeah. me wander around my backyard it was a like, simulation yeah, no, dude, we're there <laughs> look it's a rough scale Owen. oh my god oh. <laughs> get a rubber snake in a tree it's the owen uh, belly oh yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> um, but uh yeah, I you know, I, I just thought about that and they had like this uh you know, those those uh buttress root type mm-hmm. of thing that they can build and it looks all naturalistic and it looks really freaking cool. And I'm thinking like, wow, could I put like this water feature in there where they could sort of you know I oh man, it's just dude, do it. I mean my like, mind I, is going like ah. I'm enjoying watching I, I wish to God Ari would put more goddamn dude. <laughs> He's what the hell? <laughs> like, His enclosures, oh my god, at Reptiland are uh, just they're insane. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, insanity. Yep. Yeah, yep. It's Ari's Ari's <laughs> thing is going to be gorgeous, and I wish to God, like, dude, we're gonna have to make a trip out there when he's opened up. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. It looks it looks yeah. phenomenal what he's doing, and he's yeah, like, up oh, spent. 18 hours building a tree and i'm like i would love to do that <laughs> like dude yeah and you know it, it sort of like tickles the art you oh, know, yeah. the art oh, yeah. thing in me and you know it, like trying to make this enclosure and i think for the longest time like for me it's been like to start it yeah and it's like how do i start it you know and it's like oh well you know do i design it first do i sort of have these ideas do art. i just f- throw it at the wall yeah. and just see what happens and it's yeah. like no and, you know, the other, the rational side of my brain is going, no, man, just do it. Yeah. It's going to change. Things are going to evolve, but just do it. And you're probably going to finish this enclosure. Think it's the greatest. Do another one. And you're going to say, oh, that one's shit. The first you one's shit. I mean? yeah, yeah, got to get rid but of that's that. That's the problem is you got to do it because then when you do the next one, it's a little bit better. And then when you do right. the next one, it's a little bit better. Then all of a sudden you're creating these giant freaking works of art. And yes. then people are like that's amazing and you're like yeah you should see the first one it was crap like yeah. and that's yeah. that's how it goes so and i was i think what i'm i think my plan now is like i was going to move the brettles out mm-hmm. into the other room in the whatever you want to call it but i'm going to move the diamonds out there yeah because then they can get as cold yeah 50 degrees no problem down yeah. back there yeah. And that should be good. And then and they'll be like hunting and ready to go. <laughs> is this, you know? this is your, um, you're doing bread live this year, right? I could. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I, I, I'm still raising up my stone wash because I'm sitting there and I'm like, I could produce normal bread lie again. And you know, which is fine, but I want to get the stone wash, but my stone wash female is growing slow as much as I keep putting the food to her. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. 
stone like a like a straight stone wash or yeah, a hat? I have a, oh, I, have a, okay. no, I, have, I have a I have a het female still here that I've been trying to sell. Um right. and then I have a stone wash female um that's she's old enough, she's not big enough by yeah. any means by bread lie standards. So yeah. Do bread lie really have to be a certain size? Bigger than this. Or is it more than <laughs> oh, okay? Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. yeah she's they're Eric she's, size snakes. <laughs> they, well, yeah. Mm. Uh I would say her head needs to it, it, she's still got the tiny little baby head. Like oh. she's 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 not a mature bread lie at all. Um okay. I got tripped up by my I got listen, I got tripped up by the, the Brisbane, okay? I'll admit that I got tripped up by the Brisbane, but um, because I'm like, there's no way, even if the thing is a girl that's big enough to breed, why are these these slug eggs in here? Like, I'll admit that was <laughs> yeah. totally my fault. But yeah, now the bris the 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 stone wash needs another year, maybe two. I would really hope to try to do it in one more year. Okay. But we'll see. Yeah, I, I think I'm well, gonna try black face white lip this year. Oh, you are gonna try to breed them? Yep, my female. Female. So, what's your approach going to be? Are you going to do it at a different boy, time? I'm put the boy in. With oh, the girl. Jesus! And I'm going to try. And I'm just going <laughs> to. This is why there. you keep striking just, out. I, just, no, actually, I'm because you think you're breeding corn snakes. <laughs> you're shut not up with breeding your, corn shut snakes. Shut up with your sense making. <laughs> that I did by accident this year. Right. But, uh, <laughs> like that. Nah, just that wasn't even in there. there. Was Eleven eggs. I'm like, I yeah. know. You were supposed to take a year off. It's like, yeah, so it's, um, I have some people I'm going to talk to. Uh, I am going to try for different points of the year. Uh, I, my idea was to just to kind of actually cohab the male and the female together. Uh, Is that but, tricky with white lips? Yes. <laughs> I thought yeah. so. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Y- yes, it is. Um, yeah. I was hoping to have the, uh, cause I, I got some eight foot cages coming. I was hoping to have right. the eight footers because I was going to set them up there with multiple hot spots and multiple hides and try to do that. Um, okay. But that got delayed. So I might just do the female in a six footer and then introduce the male multiple times and see okay. what happens. So, all right. That sounds like a good plan. But yeah, I also I have think... the ultrasound too. So that's what I was going to say. Yep. Regularly ultrasounding her and the team more female. Uh, to see when they're on. Ob- oh, sorry, the Timor female, the black face white lip female, and the gold face white lip female to see when they're ovulating and make sure the males are present. I think I would try to breed them in the spring. That's my idea. Yeah. Is cool them down, and, and I'm going to be probably as mean to them as I am to the bread lie, but give mm-hmm. them a higher hot spot during the day. So fifties at night but try to get them up to why do you think they have to be that cold I, I, for the black you're just face, trying it the black face i would i would almost feel like they have to be it has to be getting cold there why else are you a jet black snake mm, yeah i guess yeah hmm. they're the black one i always get this mixed up the black ones are the southerns, southerns. yep golds are the northerns so they're close they're closer to australia yeah so they're closer to like Cape York and Northern Territory, Darwin. Right, which has got to be hot as balls all the time. I think it's more of a seasonal thing. I think thing. it's more of a seasonal thing, man. Right. I don't think it's a temperature thing. But, hey, man, you did it with the olives, so what do I know? <laughs> the olives, it worked, and that was just by bombing them down. For and they're a from bit. the same area. Right, right. But I only got the one female to breed, so we don't know yet. That might have just been her. Laying partho clutches, which and that's not true. I got boys, but yeah. I wonder if it's one of those things that she was going to go anyway, just because. Yeah, maybe she was of age. Maybe I mean this. This was her second clutch, uh, which was I still had like three or four babies dead in the egg, and then I had that one hard belly baby that came out, yeah. and I had horrible sex ratio. I had one male, ten females. Wow. So that's crazy. I'm going to resex everything anyway, but still. Right. But yeah, I'm, I'll try the white lips. Uh, you know, cause the other thing is that it's tickling the back of my brain is that don't fuck with it because if you get them on the same kind of rhythm, yeah, man. Yeah. 
So part of me, I don't even want to fuck with the golds because this will be their third year trying. Yeah. And if I go through the same motions, she put on some size. He didn't because I fed him birds and very sparingly because he's a monster already. Right. Maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe th- maybe they'll gore each other again. I don't know. I think there's I think there's some some merit in that. I think there's yeah. some merit in staying consistent in what you're doing. Right. Um I think that that with those those in particular, they're just high strung, you know. They, they just they stress out quick, you know. Yeah, and I think are. you gotta get them comfortable and settled in. And- dude, like with them, I barely like I will wait till she's in the hide box, move the whole hide box, yeah, spot clean everything, and then put her back. When I do mulch changes. I have to wait until she's in the box and then I take the whole hide box out, do the mulch change, put it back. And I very rarely do mulch changes just because I want everything to smell like her. Right. And stuff like that. So I'll put yeah. a bunch of shovels of his mulch in her cage before I set them up. But it's going to have to be one of those times where I set them up and I sit down there for another 20 minutes to make sure they don't kill each other. So it's that I, kind of thing. I think, I think maybe, you'll hit it eventually. I think it's just yeah. a matter of just staying the course, you know? Yeah, and then there's that whole thing of, like, what would I be more excited? Like, dude, I was excited as shit to get Mad Hog Eggs this year. Now I'm gonna, I'm staring in the barrel of heaven, like, three next year. It's like, oh, God, babies are driving me nuts, dude. So Just hard to get going? I, I got two females eating, <laughs> and then uh, the other three are not at all. Right. So I want to eat a gecko-scented fuzzy, but... I'm going to have to go get geckos. So, which, you know, past Owen was furious about uh, Dominican red, Dominican red mountain boas (laughs) doing this damn. Yeah. This this Owen is like, screw it. I'll go get some geckos. So, yep. Yeah. I think, man, with all those crazy colubrids and stuff you got, you're probably going to have to delve more into that. Yep. Well, don't worry because I'm going to be adding geckos. So, good. I can give you some skins and stuff. I need all the skins. Yep. Yeah. all the skins because i have to try to figure out where i can because there's no reptile show because normally i would just walk in and be like yeah i need your cheapest day gecko it's all a right. food gecko but now i got nothing for a bit so and i'm not going to a pet store to buy a freaking gecko to feed yeah so. yeah plus you probably probably pay an exorbitant yeah, amount of money oh, for yeah. that gecko oh, yeah. to feed it's a your dollar gecko sir uh, no yeah but, no, no, no. Listen, I know these things are a dollar, so shut up. So yeah. it yeah. How much is a leopard gecko at a pet store? 80 it, bucks? It, 80 I has to be 80 bucks, but that I wouldn't do a leopard. I would just I mean there there's they ha, they do have geckos that are used for feeders. Right. But the other problem is that when you do that, now you're taking a wild gecko and feeding it to your snake. Well, what's the one that um Ron was talking about? Pick the geckos that yeah, breed they, like crazy and yeah, they don't like everywhere. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I'll 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 figure it out. I mean, when I had the Dominicans, I had a tank full of geckos um that I got from Strictly. And uh yeah. that's when I also had the baby mangrove monitors. So yeah. a couple geckos got out and they ran out of my room. And then right into the mangrove monitor cage. And, and they became dinner. Yeah, I didn't have to worry about them any longer. So yeah. It was just, just, yeah. <laughs> that's kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I'm I adding, uh, I, I was telling you before, I, I'm, mm. I'm, I got a group of 20 snakes going to be going out. Um, various ones and stuff. And. I know it's like, at least now, my mm-hmm. stuff that comes in is way lower than the stuff that goes out. It goes out, know? right. <laughs> you know? Which is what it, some would say, in theory, is what it should have been, you know? Yeah, you know, I'm trying to get... I, I can't wait to get to the day where my collection is, like, closed. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a couple more monitor stuff I would like to add. There's a couple more gecko stuff I'd like to add. Um, you ever think you'd be done though? I think so. I think I'm going to get to the, I think once, once I start approaching it for more of the enjoyment of keeping mm-hmm. the animals and watching them and observing them and all like, I, I think about like how much work I could have did to my reptile room right? when I spent, you know, thousands of dollars on 
um, whatever the morph would be. You know what right. I mean? So like, right. uh, you know, getting the, you know, the room better, you know, dialed into, mm. you know, the lighting and the, the, the airflow and the temperature and, um, just really having top notch stuff and timers and, and all this stuff. And then I think about like, I, I should, I probably should ask Nipper this or whatever, but never even thought of me until we started talking. Like the people that keep animals in more naturalistic enclosures and stuff, do they heat the room or do they just heat the cage? You know what I mean? I think you could do both. Probably want the ambient temperature to be higher would be my you thought. You probably want the ambient temperature to be something. You can't just leave it as is. But I would say that there are some people that would probably do either or. Either you make a little micro habitat and you have to adhere to some strict stuff or you can keep the room and not have to push it that far. I mean, right? yeah. Yeah, that's something I've been thinking about. And then what's the electric going to be like? But if yeah. you don't have a ton of snakes, then, you know... It's not that part or a ton of stuff, you know, imagine having a normal like electric. Like, can you imagine if you had because that's the other thing is I was talking to a friend Mm. who's moving his stuff off site. Right. And it's like, oh, dude, I'm going to have a normal electric bill at the house. I'm like, holy shit. What that? What's that like? (laughs) Like, Yeah. He's like thirty dollars a month. What? (laughs) Like, it's Wait, what? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of crazy <laughs> when you look at your electric bill sometimes. You're like, oh, shit. It, it, it's the slow creep. Otherwise, <laughs> if, if I had started off with as high it as it is now in the beginning, I would never have done it. So, yeah, I think the, uh, you know, UV, I don't, I wouldn't keep that on all day. Right, I'd sort yeah. of have that on a timer that kind of goes on for a little bit. Yeah. Comes back on later on or whatever. That's but, actually, uh, I was thinking about a lot of that kind of stuff because I'm trying to redo, I got to redo two enclosures for my false water cobra because they got to move up because they're getting too big. Right. Um, and I'm like, ah, I'll put bar lights in here and I'm thinking about UV lights and other things like that. But then I'm also considering like what kind of heat I should do in there too because the cages are a little bit bigger and there should right. be some kind of panel. So now I need a computer system too. It's like, shit, all this stuff's being outfitted and it's like, all right, well, Quick, sell a mad hog, baby. <laughs> it's like hey, we're gonna have to yeah. do this. So, and then I think, like, am I gonna sell all my racks and stuff? Am I gonna keep some of that? Like, damn it, I, I wish I had a bigger house. <laughs> Just, you know, I, I think yeah. I was like, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna keep uh, I that? Mean, am I gonna keep some of it? I mean, I think, I'll probably I think keep some keep, of it for quarantine. There you go. Like I was that. about to say, yeah. I'm gonna keep some of them for quarantine. Um, but then I keep the yeah. baby racks because when I set up the babies, it's just going to be set up their babies. Yeah. But I mean, you yeah, I, I would say, I would say, yeah. I mean, if you're not going to do it, then yeah, keep one rack for quarantine and then ditch everything else. It just, it's just taking up space and you're not going to go back into it. So why do it? I think I would, uh, I, you know, I'd like to, at some point use yeah. those, Maybe try to use some of those nano, um, the exoterra, exoterras or whatever yeah. for like babies carpets or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. I you know is it is it feasible? I think you know it might be cool. Yeah, um, I think it would be to do it. You know, I could do one UV light and a heat light or whatever mm-hmm. across the whole top or I something mean, like that. You can. I've seen people build wood racks with those nanos in them that they use for like uh displays at reptile shows and they well, have Keith bar did that. And stuff. yeah and you it was really cool yeah and i kind of like looked that like that look mm-hmm. and that's why i was thinking like you know i could do a section where i sort of had those and you know could sort of give them that and see if it makes a difference or if it doesn't make a difference you know i i don't know i don't mm-hmm. know if it would or it wouldn't but like i guess if i'm gonna do you know you would have to really be very selective in what you're breeding. You couldn't, you know, you can't go you, nuts. You can't yeah. go crazy because then, you know, you're not going to, you're just not going to have space. Well, that or you're just going to have it. to decide that it's going to be one of those things where you have the set number of slots and it's good. Now, if you breed over, you're going to have to wholesale some stuff. Yeah. I, it's crazy how it's like, now that I, I'm I'm getting older and stuff, it's like I used to not wear. I, I said I'll figure it out, mm-hmm. you know. So if I bred it, I'd be like, oh wait, I only have 
X know. amount of baby slots. Yeah. 92 baby slots, but I bred 127 babies. Shit. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, um, that's poor planning, man. <laughs> Yeah, you know? but you know that's the other thing is that you never know what's going to come out, whether what eggs are going to hatch, what aren't, what babies are going to come out alive, what aren't, and then who's going to eat and who's not. And then, dude, I had four or five people begging me to sell them carpet pythons so that they could go to Daytona with them. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you hear about how Daytona was? I did hear about how Daytona was. How I was heard it? from I heard from the Tiger Man himself. Oh, Balin was there. No yeah, sure. he called. Yep, he called. He and I spoke yesterday. Um, he said he went down there. He said it was a nice show. He said there was a lot of people there that he recognized. He had some good conversations. He had a fun time. That's um, cool. So that is good. Uh, I did see. He didn't go down there to vend. He just went down. No, there. no, he just went. Yeah. Um, I saw a fair amount of people's Facebook and stuff that I recognized. I'm disappointed because. Uh, KJ is like, dude, you guys should have come down. I found a new spot for Eastern Diamondbacks. Damn I'm it. Like, like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Give me two hours at the show. All right. Uh, let's go. Yeah, find, let's go. <laughs> screw the reptiles. Screw the, no, you do you do a loop around the show. You're like, all right, I'm done. Let's go. Let's let's go. Let's yeah. go. So I'm, you know, and that's something where Melissa's like, she's got friends and family down there too. And yeah. They go to the show and they're a little disappointed that she didn't arrive. I'm like, all right, well, next year we're going to have to go to Daytona. So, yeah, I think that would be if I was going to go to a show. Yeah, I think I, I would. I would. I, I think I would go like if I was going to do. I don't know. Mm. I, I think like, uh, you know, if if I was going to vend a show ever again, mm-hmm. I think I would do it as NPR. Network. Right, where we can and, leave the interns, and then you and I can go herping and leave them at the table. Yeah, leave them at the table. Yeah, see, um, there you go. But uh, I think I, I think I wouldn't necessarily sell snakes. Well, there's the thing. Like, you I can mean, sell I, the snakes. I uh, no, uh, that's interns. Um, but it's like I've been to shows where it's like I've been to Daytona where I didn't bring any snakes. It was awesome because I, I left and I went and got food and hung out with people and it was done and easy. Um, I've been to Tinley where I didn't have anything and it yeah. was awesome. It's good. So man. yeah, I, I almost feel like it, it's more fun going as a spectator, knowing some of these people. Um, and then, you know, I, dude, I, I wholesale more animals than I knew what to do with this year. Like these corn snakes, they're going to hatch in a couple weeks. You think I'm, doing anything with them <laughs> like they just like straight out okay. i have a list of people that they're gone man like it's wow i'm gonna have to yeah you i say, think uh give me give me a list of your shit if you want to i'll tell people but okay it's like yeah but people it's that like, want a wholesale yeah man that's to yeah, me that's i, I mean it, it i know i used to, to poo poo it and all that other stuff but i now have more time for the animals that i'm keeping that are you know, cream of the crop. Yeah. I don't, you know, I, I don't necessarily think, well, I think there's benefits to two sides of it, right? There are. I think the good side of it is if you're wholesaling out, at least mm-hmm. you're wholesaling out what, what people could say is legit carpets, you know what right. I mean? So like, and then if, if they wanted something from, you know, if somebody wants something from me and like, I have people that I, I talk to on the regular and if that, you know, they're always asking about X animal, if it breeds mm-hmm. or whatever the case would be friends and family stuff, you know, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Like, yeah, that, that I'm not going to not do that. Yeah. I'm not going to um, do that. I mean, it's just one of those things where you can, you can decide which ones you're going to put your time and effort into, but then also like it gets, it gets you more sane. Like if I kept every single baby this year, I'd have no slots open right now. Yeah. But now I have slots open. Now also I have sanity. So when these olive pythons are pissing me off because they won't eat, I can spend extra time trying to get them going. Yeah. And on the flip side of things Mm -hmm. though, I think about the whole, you know, the COVID thing Mm -hmm. sort of Mm -hmm. like push the reptile hobby Woo, gave it a big push forward, you know, because yeah, everybody was sort of, you know, 
stuck at home and surfing yep. the internet or whatever, you know, or yeah, maybe they right. wanted to, you know, whatever the case would be. And then they got interested in it. And then the next thing you know, reptile industry gets sort of this, this bigger push. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think about like, okay, so if there's more people coming into the hobby, you know, you want to kind of have stuff available that is, that is good, you know, but I don't know, man. I, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm sort of torn with that, but I think at the end of the day, I'm not looking to, uh, you know, get rich selling snakes. Yeah, no, that, you, know, that, you know what I mean? That, that's that's never, what the monitors are for. Woo! There you go. <laughs> First off, that was never going to happen. Like, dude, I could, I could get a clutch of Timor pythons, black white lips and gold white lips. And it's still going to be a bitch and I'm not going to become a millionaire. Like that's just going to be how it goes. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Yeah. I, yeah. I think for me, like it's, it's better to have those kind of things because maybe you can trade for yeah. some of the other projects that, oh, you, yeah. that you may want, you know, I, I mean, that, I, that's always an added to, bonus. I'm trying to line trade up for to roughies. <laughs> I, I'm trying. I know. I know some people who are producing roughies that want olive pythons. So, um, well, there that's you go. In the, that's in the book. And then I, uh, I had that Argentine bug that I know somebody kind of wanted some olive pythons too, and I got olives. I'd right. much rather trade like um, the jungle male that produced like two clutches this year. Right. I traded an olive python for him last year. Wow. Okay. So, all right, it worked. Right. I'd much rather just do that. And then he produced two clutches. He has yeah. earned his spot. <laughs> like, yeah, man. Done. Yeah. I, um, I think with, uh, you know, the, the, we were talking about before this, the, the price, mm -hmm. I was telling you how much the Queensland water pythons go for now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's like a thousand dollars for a pair. And, um, when I think about that and I bought my water pipe, uh, it's a couple of years ago. Yeah. They were like 300 bucks. Dude. If I, that. I think about that constantly as I look at things like my white lips and I'm like, if you just fucking had babies. Yeah. Like, will you breed, you stupid bastards. Like I paid $400 for you. Like, come on. So, you yeah. know, it's right now. I think golds are somewhere into the teens and blacks are somewhere in the twos. It's nuts. So I think too, like, do you think that the reptile hobby is going towards, you know, you're always going to have your big breeders. Yes. But when you have these boutique breeders where they're focused on, you know, one or two different types of things mm -hmm. that those animals somehow become worth like they're, they're more valuable, if you will. You know. I think they will. And I think that's always going to be how it goes because I think certain people are going to be known for a certain thing. I think right. that was already kind of happening with ball python because the only thing you could really do with ball pythons was produce the morphs that everybody else was producing or take a morph and make that your thing. Yeah. And really go and enhance that. And I think the same thing's happening with things like corn snake and retic and stuff like that. So I think it's only a matter of time before it hits with carpets too, right. where it's really becoming the reptile hobby is what are you known for? Right. You're known for having the most kick-ass whatever know, sunburst right. corn snake or whatever the hell. And you have right. all the different types of sunburst you could possibly have, but you really dialed in there and really focused on the sunburst. So all yours look really cool and the, the best ones. And everybody kind of recommends that because I know there are also certain people that only deal with like clown ball Python or yeah. Um, stuff like that. And that's where you kind of focus in on it. So right. I would say that that's where it kind of becomes where you have the big name breeders that will produce everything. Right. But their clown ball python compared to this other guy's clown ball python is definitely lacking. They're still clowns. They still might look good, but this guy's right. is on another level. Well, so, it's sort of like, yeah, it's sort of to your point. It's sort of yeah. what we said earlier with localities, right? Like right. if you're going to selectively breed or whatever the case would be, or you're going to work with coastal carpets or whatever, you want to get mm -hmm. the nicest examples you can get. And then you're going to produce nice babies and you're going to refine it and whatever, blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah, blah. You're going to have these amazing, you know, animals. Like you think about like guys like, uh, you know, Mike and Penn and, you know, Balin and you mm -hmm. know, take, you know, all the guys that, that have, uh, you know, shit, even, uh, you know, I remember when Julie was working on, um, 
the granite stuff, yep, you know, and yep. she was using that Viking reptilia line of granite stuff. Right. She was just making amazing. Like there was nobody that could even compete with it. You know, I remember I got, a, I got granite from Nick and this was when Nick really wasn't a quote unquote IJ guy. Like guy, he had yeah. IJs, but he, ne he wasn't necessarily like, you know, refining that part of his collection, mm -hmm, if you will. And his granites were, well, they were nice, but it's like, huh? Okay. Mm -hmm. Why oh, doesn't it look like I, that? I mean, they, <laughs> you know? I they, and it really comes down to the selective breeding, you know. It that is that guy was selective breeding just granites, you know, different looks and um and he, that's where it comes down to is like you know, if you have a good looking animal, like I I know I have a nice looking couple jungles and stuff like that. I'm just gonna keep breeding them and doing that stuff. But if I had like I have two very, very good looking tiger females. Right. And I have two, maybe three good looking tiger boys. Right. And the one male I bred this year really kind of stuck out. And I'm like, okay, that's good. All right. I now know where I'm going. But the one tiger female that I was kind of on the fence about, she produced right. a baby male, like red, that looks like he was, I don't know, like he was soaked in Kool Aid for three weeks. And really? he's got a perfect stride. I'm like, all right, well, shit. I'm like, I don't need another tiger male, but God damn, that's hard. So maybe you start doing that. I think it would be a disservice to do like, I would, I'm going to start being pickier about the males, the tigers that I throw to the, to those two girls, because I, I mean, that's another whole nother level of tiger. Yeah. I, I, I think you're wise to do so. You know, Thank you. I think, uh, <laughs> to have the nicest examples you can have and just keep refining that stripe. And that's you know. what you should do. You know, if you have a nice example of a carpet, be picky about it or, or a morph or whatever, be picky about it because you never know when that thing that you have is going to be like the cornerstone of an entire project. Yeah. That's going to launch you into a little bit higher. Like why not? Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I guess we'll close with the big news of the, I guess, well, it's big news to us, Carpet it Python. Big, nerds. Yeah, and nobody else cares. <laughs> yeah. But Justin and Nick uh, sort of shared the cover. I, I yes. we, we sort of kind of knew this already. We knew it, yeah, then, but come on. That they were using the that Flinders ring. I mean, dude, that Oh, my is, God, it was pretty. I love that they used that <laughs> snake. Fucking love that snake. You know? Yeah. Um. So I guess we're at the stage now where, you know, we're, we're coming to, I mean, I, I think I, according to Justin and Nick, it, you know, they were trying to get it out sometime by the end, you know, by the end of the year before mm -hmm. that, maybe the fall, whatever the case would be. Yep. Um, so I think they're, they're, they're winding that up. And I think from what he said, there was writing is all done. Mm hmm. Um, and, uh, they're, I guess they're waiting on a couple more pictures and I guess they're going through the process of like laying out the book, which I would imagine is a total pain in the ass. And when you're not doing it yourself and I would, I think from what Justin was saying, it's like the editor kind of does it and then you kind of approve mm -hmm. it. I don't know if that's the case or not, but, yeah. um, I would imagine that that's sort of a back and forth a little bit, you know, like, oh, I don't want that there. What are you putting that there for? Like, what, what the it, hell, it, you know? Yeah, it's going to happen. Because it's kind of your baby, it. you know? You yeah. Know? It's kind of like, um, and the fact that, uh, well, Dr. Warren Booth mm -hmm. wrote a section on, um, well, obviously he has the whole um, genetics that he did, studies that he did. So it'd be mm -hmm. interesting to finally get that out into the, uh, into the world. And, um, you got the uh yeah i'm just curious to see how they break it down i know justin was sharing some some stuff with me as far as like ideas and you know when we were in texas the year before he sort of yep. had some ideas and stuff and just uh, the, this is just going to be it's just going to be i can't yeah man i, I don't have no it, words it, it's going to be it, amazing it's, it's amazing be book. book yeah um i think it's going to i think it's going to re reignite some of that uh passion in people again you know because it's really kind of like passion. that thing and um yeah i don't know and it seems like there's a lot there's a lot of new people that are coming into carpets and morelia 
and mm-hmm. not being on Facebook all the time. It's kind of like, who's this? <laughs> like, wow, that's a nice, who's this? You know, yeah. it's, it's it, kind of cool to see that. It's really going to be cool. And it's really going to be another step up. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I'm definitely interested in seeing it. So I think I might buy like four books. <laughs> <laughs> four yeah. books. Yeah. Yeah. Because good Lord, man. I mean, like, you know, if you're looking, so this is the sucky thing, right? I mean, yep. you can't get a better book than the complete carpet Python. And like, I know people are looking for that all over the place and it's crazy money. Yeah. I'm, on, what on the f- why is that so crazy nuts? money? Um, but at the same time, you have this new one coming out. So my advice would be don't spend money on the crazy. Not that it's old. It's only 10 years old. Yeah. But uh, spend money on the new one. You know? Yeah. But. I mean, I, I'm sitting there and I'm looking over there and I'm like, I have the complete everything. <laughs> like I right. I have the knob tail, the con the two boa constrictors the two chondros the carpet the children's and the subak so i'm missing the, the ball new python one, the new carpet and the ball python are and you going to buy oh it, it, you know are you going ir- to buy you know how much it irks python. me that i'm missing <laughs> something i'm missing something and it, it hurts, hurts your me. brain it hurts like, me ah! but i don't I don't know if it hurts me enough to do it. Like, I'll never read this book. I'll I never read care it, less. But I needed to put it over here. Like, I need it, to collect the set. I don't, it, it, it hurts. It hurts me. Um, luckily, there is no way I'm getting my hands on the Kevin McCurley complete ball python because, I mean, that thing's 400 bucks. A two, I found it for 200 bucks and 400 bucks. Are you serious? Yeah. I have a copy right there. Wow. Yeah. There you go. That's uh, you want me to sell it to you? I'll sell it to you half price. I don't know. No, no, <laughs> like half price of the 200 or half price of the 400. You know what I mean? Ah, uh, 200. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Not, I'll be nice. The 200. Oh, yes. <laughs> thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I mean, I don't uh, this book that I'll never read. <laughs> it's right. just, yeah, yeah, I know. So for me, like the book thing has kind of been a way to sort of um scratch the itch of uh. The whole buying snakes, but not actually buying snakes. <laughs> yes, 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 a hundred percent. And um, you know, it's kind of uh, kind of good in a way, you know, because you don't have to feed books, <laughs> you don't have yeah, to that, clean books. Yeah, all you have to do is read the books, you know. But and also, um, once they go out of print, man, I mean, like they just, yeah, you know, it's yeah, who knows. Like you said, that's your retirement. I'll wait till you get hit by a bolt of lightning, and then I'll just take your complete ball python, and put it like in the in the I'll box it, under I'll underneath all the other yeah. ones. Yeah, <laughs> underneath all the other books that I'm taking, they're all Aussie python stuff. I'll just slide the ball python one on the bottom. So, so it's funny you can't really see it, but like that whole one Jesus book rack here. Yeah, yeah, that's all Australian books. Damn, dude, all Australian books. Damn, I only have various like ones. <laughs> it's like and the one on this side is mostly all like this is all american stuff um yeah. random weird species that i thought i might want one day or something I like that the one that's the uh u.s uh, snakes of the u.s and canada volume one and volume two i haven't that's read good. those yet either yeah i gotta get that one for the uh the 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 ones the snakes of china or whatever the thing you had that one of oh, the asian rat snakes yeah i gotta get that one next yeah i'm surprised i got that before you i don't it shut up <laughs> <laughs> he's like oh, shit. i don't i know i know you know we all know it just i should i have a list you know her, her family and stuff don't know what to do with me come my birthday and christmas so i just give them a list of the reptiles yes. i want because then Perfect. it's just an easy way to hit get that done and they don't have to like you know wander off and be like i don't know how, what is a rough scale python it's like that's all i want on my list it's like right a, yeah i did pick up the books that um you know mm-hmm. scott iper um yes yeah I have. Post, posted up two book. well i have the lizard book that he just had that came out, which is I fantastic. I don't have that one. Which is cool. Yeah. Um, but the 
Rocky Outcrops in Australia. Yeah. Ecology, conservation, and management. I was like, yeah. oh, that's right up my alley. I, I get like some Rocky Outcrops. <laughs> <laughs> Naturalistic <laughs> displays and stuff. <laughs> um, so uh, it's by Damian Michael and David uh, Lindermeyer. Um, right. And then there was a reinvention of Australian biogeography, reform, revolt, rebellion. So, well, uh, you know, the other thing over there that hurts me is that I have pythons um, of uh, of I the world. Of, I have pythons of the world, volume three, <laughs> and I do not have volume two or volume one. So, did you ever have volume one? No, no. Oh, no. That really? was expensive by the time I showed up, man. Like that was dude. I'll never forget when I first got into into cart like really started like researching yeah. carpets or whatever. That was the book, right? Yeah. You had to have that book. You book. know, it was yeah, first yeah. it was Pythons and Boas reproduction by got Roth. It. It's over there. Yeah. You know, and then there was Pythons of the World, Volume One, Australia. And right. you know, to me. I never thought that you would pay three hundred dollars for, for a book. book. Yeah, I'm like, wait, what? Yeah, and I remember going on eBay, <clears throat> and you know, this is even before NPR. I remember going on eBay, and back then, when you would like, you know, you would bid on it, mm -hmm. and you'd have to wait like ten seconds before it's the the bidding stopped, and you right. would throw that last bid in and try to get it. And then eventually I got it. I think I got it for like $105. Dear God. Which was just crazy at the time because, right. you know, they were going for like anywhere from three to $500. Yeah, I think they're so, I think they're still up there. And what's crazy, it's even crazier is, is that I remember going to the pet shop on Rising Sun Avenue. Yeah. It's called Pets and Things, I think it was the name of it. Anyway. They had a little spinny book thing, you know, mm -hmm. you know how like in the old pet and, shops and they had that little spinny there, book like and it was sitting for, there yeah. and it was like 30 bucks. And I was so, like, oh, that's expensive for a book. So <laughs> Amazon has one in stock in good condition and it is a paperback and it is for $699.99. Holy shit. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That is crazy. That's gonna be one of those. Like, I'm, I'm gonna see if there, if there's anybody ever getting out. Like, I'm out of, I'm out of snakes. I'm leaving. I'm just gonna message, be like, do you, you have? have <laughs> <laughs> the one book I can't find that I want more than anything, as far as Australian books is, is that Richard mm -hmm. Shine sort of wrote this pamphlet on uh, diamond pythons, okay. and Dave Kelly showed it to me. And I was like, oh, my God, how awesome would that be to read a book? Well, it's mm -hmm. not really a book. It's more of a pamphlet. But read this pamphlet or whatever about diamond pythons from Richard Shine. Like, holy hell. Yeah. I can't find it anywhere. Nowhere. I've looked everywhere for it. And I, I've come so close. And I can't find it. And I then have, there was. Um, I've got a PDF of field uh, feeding habits of diamond pythons. No, that's like papers. Shine. No, this oh, yeah. is yeah, okay. the it's a pamphlet. Cat, no, the uh, the wildlife management of diamond. I don't. I can't remember exactly. The biology and management of diamond pythons by Richard Shine, right? Yeah. Yes, that's it. Found it for sale. No. <laughs> no. I was gonna say, holy hell. No. That happened to me with um, um, that happened to me when I was looking for the. So I have snakes of Western Australia, yeah, skinks of Western Australia, dragons of Western Australia, and guess was the one that was that I couldn't find was monitors and monitors. Yeah, no wait, it's skinks of Australia, snakes of Australia. Oh, geckos of Australia, and then it's mm. monitors and dragons of Australia. Okay. Of Western Australia. Of Western Australia. And I think that's volume three, maybe volume three. Okay. Anyway, I couldn't find it. I think I said it on a show or something. And somebody, somebody got it. it. And they're like, oh, I found a copy of it. And I was like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta like constantly watch. It's just like it's just like 
scratching that itch to get right. that snake right you're right. like looking for right. it you're you know like oh my god i'm hunting well, for this like, thing I, I, I can't find it anywhere somebody gives you a little lead like oh they have it you know and I, you're I, like, mentioned, ah. I mentioned i didn't have any then the complete chondro and uh somebody sent me the more complete chondro python oh really they had an extra and oh, i'm like okay. well shit now i'm gonna have to and then i found the complete chondro on ebay for right. like 30 bucks and i'm like all right buy this it's like yeah i'm yeah, you need to stop. And then my father-in-law got me the complete children's python. He didn't know idea what he was buying, but it's right. Just, yeah, oh, yeah, this looks cool. Yeah, that's like what this. happens. It's like it says so, python on it. Exactly. Well, that's what happens. They're like, what do you? What kind of books do you want? I just send them links. I'm like, here you go. There yeah. it is. Go get it. Yeah. So I have to start. Uh, uh, start reading more. Yeah, so. me too. Yeah. Make a nipper do audio books of them all. <laughs> wouldn't that be great yep so i should give an, a couple updates on some shows and i guess then we can uh probably should get uh so if you haven't listened episode two of colubrid and colubrid radio is up uh and that I thought is, it was colubrid colubroid oh yeah what am i saying and God, i don't know what you're doing okay yes sorry ccr <laughs> so you. it's colubrid and colubroid radio uh and that is by uh, Dr. Zach Loafman and Matt Most. Um, guys are really good together. I, mm -hmm. I, have you listened to it at all yet? Oh. I have not, uh, uh, but is, I downloaded it and is on my list of like once I'm done with this audio book I'm listening to. It's the first. I know thing. you're not a podcast guy, I am but not, I think but... I think you'll enjoy this one. I really, yeah, I, I really I do. Not, but that, that's 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 right up in my alley. So yeah. And the last episode they had on what was his name, Matt. No. Um, hold on. Mm. Oh, Matt. I'm saying Matt. Matt most. No, they had on Clint Bartley and they talked okay. Asian rat snakes and black rat snakes. Done. So as I'm editing this, I'm like, oh, this is right up on sound. Yeah, it's like done. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh so some cool stuff. It's definitely worth checking it out. Mm -hmm. um and those guys are uh yeah like i said you know they're 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 fantastic uh you know uh, doing it um the marco shea episode <gasps> i had it completely edited mm. and i sent it to mark and nipper and mark was like ah, i don't like this part i don't like that part you know maybe we should change this and he's like you know i'm free most nights this is when i was telling you like how crazy is it to be messaging with marco, marco shea, shea yeah. you know what i mean so Ugh. i was like um well we can do it again <laughs> you know well, like I mean, we can totally yeah, do no, whatever no you problem want, you know yeah. you want to chat i'll chat let's do it right now um so i think we might re-record some parts and get some okay. more so it's going to be a two-part series just so everybody knows it's um so this is the field herp podcast that nipper and i do but um it's the first episode of this of this two-part series is going to be on the rough scale expedition and the second one is going to be more geared towards papua new guinea uh just in general just you know because if you know mark o'shea mm -hmm. sort of his focus and his love has always sort of been papua new guinea but nice. man the guy has some crazy stories and man oh it's dude Yep. So as soon as we get them wrapped up with that, then we're going to try to bring them on NPR. And uh, that should be fun. Cool. For you. I mean, I no. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Yeah, I think we no. I think we could talk to him about all kinds of stuff. I mean, stuff, I'll, I'll try, him. but it's, dude, it, that, that's the problem is you're talking to a guy who's like, I would like to be you, sir. Like, yeah. it is, like it's yeah uh, yeah it's kind of crazy it's almost like got the same kind of impact from because we kind of came back into reptiles around the same time even though i'm older than you right. <clears throat> but we're still influenced by those same people so you had steve right. Irwin and marco shea you know jeff yeah. corwin was sort of in there i guess but they were the two big ones yeah at least steve stood Irwin, out marco me. shea jeff corwin <laughs> i mean you know, you know. it's it, it, and it, just from my thing of like uh talking with clyde peeling a bunch and stuff like that it's like it, there's there's so many people you can look up to in reptile. I mean, like, dude, I I'm watching these things. Like I follow Ty park and stuff like that. Can you imagine yeah. building your own zoo the way that guy's doing like down there? Holy I mean, shit, man. and it looks gorgeous. 
Yeah, man. Amazing lucky, shit. Lucky bastards, all of them. Well, so. I don't know, man. Maybe we'll we'll, we'll get there one day. You know, I mean, <laughs> like, I, like I was watching uh, Barcheck's thing where I think one of his anacondas had a baby, <laughs> and he thought it was the boy anaconda, but then it shot out a kid, and it's like, oh shit! And I'm like. <laughs> I'm Oops. like I would like uh, yeah I'm like I would love that uh, I'd love that to be the daily occurrences so yep yeah can you imagine how much so see, see to me mm. that sort of is the perfect mix right I don't have to sell snakes right but I get to share my passion with people with right snakes. and then you hire somebody and, and they got amazing the enclosures yeah, and you can yeah. watch it and breed yeah. it and you know yeah. all and that, you, that you have somebody that works where's on that. Tip- yeah, you have somebody that works off commission that handles your website that takes pictures of the animals that sells them, boxes them, and then ships them out. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Lucas. It's a dream. <laughs> yeah, right. We, we don't have much time. The second he becomes some sort of doctor, we're going to lose him. Yeah, so, he's going to be gone. <laughs> exactly. We, we were prepping him for the world. And you yeah, know, he's, nah, he's, yeah. The, all right. The, the, the mass. The, yeah. The, what is it? The T. Te- the. The student, the student has, has become, become the, the teacher. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is quickly oh gosh, what's going to end up happening there. So, um, so okay, so that's the Marco Shea episode. Um, nice. uh, we're going to get uh, Carpet and Cliff Notes going again. I got yep. some ideas for that, and I'm sure you guys are going to be working on Kalua Corner at some point. Um, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we haven't discussed that, especially with the new Collier Brid, Collier Broid coming out. So I'll see if yeah. Riley still wants to keep going with that or if he wants to just kind of let the Collier Brid guy. When you got somebody like Zach Loferman running a Collier Brid show on your channel, it's like I, I could just ramble like an idiot for 20 minutes or you can go actually speak to a guy who knows what he's doing. So, well, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think the difference is probably they're more focused on like what we did with NPR right, is like the, right. the breeding and the keeping and of the them keeping. rather than right. You know, so I'll, I'll the natural Riley history. and I will Riley and I will talk about it. We'll see if we want to do it. You guys we'll can always there. come up with a different idea. You know what I mean? We could, like, or I could just stick. We could with talk NPR about water balls, or no, yeah, I mean, you could stay with no, NPR. Math show and all he does. That's very angry show. Yeah. <laughs> like it's just a lot of him yelling about water balls. So. Um. But yeah, I think uh, I think there's that, and then um, I, you know, um, I think uh, yeah, all the show shows are doing great. Couple. You know, yeah. the the Aussie podcast, uh, her they're, rolling, Podrigal, they're doing great. Um, Carpet uh, Carpets and Coffee is doing great, um, and I'm, yeah. I'm just trying to like make sure that the shows are, you know, are 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 what's the word, you know, that it's not always mean you talk, you know what I mean? Right. Like I'm trying, I'm trying yeah, to differentiate the show bit. so that yeah. it's a different, t- you know, I, I know like sometimes the format's the same, but like the field herping podcast is nothing like. MPR, right. And that's the you know? idea. You know, it, listen, you, you turn on ESPN, you're going to get sports. It's not going to be the right. same sport every time, but right. it's going to be a sports thing. This is a reptile network, right? right. Like you're going to get reptiles. Yeah. You might not get the same kind or the same show, but yeah, there is going to be some overlapping and some things, but yeah. So. And me and Rob are trying to rework some ideas as far as student of the serpent. I think that, um, okay. I think that, uh, we're, we, you know, we might try to do, I don't know. I don't know. We've, we've talked about different things and it just seems like we just sort of, I don't know what it is about that, but we just sort of don't make it happen. But mm. We'll have to we'll have to either do something about do something that or, or something yeah. Else. yeah, you know, which it's is good. good. I mean, you know, I, it's you know, I guess some of them take off and some of them don't. There'll always be yeah. NPR. There'll always be carpet clip. Yeah, yeah. Be, I mean, uh, we've yeah. been around here for too long. One of us will have to die before it ends. Yeah, exactly. Probably be me first. So. No, no, that's <laughs> that's what everybody expects, which is why I'm doomed. So yeah. and it's just. <laughs> So uh, I'm trying to think. I might be, yeah. The Aussie, the Aussie guys, uh, Luke and Jason, they do a mm-hmm. great job. They've had some some awesome guests, and I think this last one, I didn't listen to it yet, but they talked about leaf tail geckos, which is oh, nice. that's that's a whole nother can of uh, you know rabbit hole that you go down. Yeah, um, that is insane. But it, it, I do love the fact that they are, um, you know focusing on the australian hobby mm-hmm. 
side of thing. You know what I mean? They're coming mm-hmm. from that aspect as opposed to what we do is like Americans dreaming of Australians, things, you know, yeah. that kind of stuff. So, um, that's pretty cool. Um, I'm trying to think what else I know we're still working on the, uh, you know, Nick's Nick's thing. So we're working on that. Um, yep. obviously there's the fight club reptile fight club. That's mm-hmm. doing real well. That's, that's pretty cool. Uh, obviously Justin and Chuck, great, 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 great guys. And, uh, do, uh, they do a good show and it's tough man to like show up and have to argue the side of the side that you're not on, <laughs> you know? So I give him credit for that. Cause some, you know, it seems like Justin wins all the time. It's always Chuck, but yeah. Arguing the other side makes you sharp. So it you know, does. You know. And, and it also gets you to look at it from a different, you know, from different perspectives. And I think yeah. that's the whole point of this show, which when Justin pitched that idea to me, I was like, wow, that's genius. You know? So I'm trying to think of maybe things that we could do. You know, I know there was at one point me, Lucas and I were talking about, uh, you know, the whole, uh, um, doing like a pet centered getting into reptiles, beginner, type of podcast thing but the one that i will mention that i stumbled upon this and every once in a while i'll do this and i'll go and just look up reptiles on um the podcast app and um so um the chameleon breeders podcast um he's doing a new podcast called the reptile entrepreneur Nice. Which is kind of like a mix between it's 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 actually I've listened to a couple episodes and it's it's actually pretty good. So if you're like interested in starting a reptile business Mm -hmm. or like coming up with a product for a reptile, like you know, I think of uh David Brahms was like I think Mm -hmm. his first guest and his 3D printing perches and all and blah blah blah. How you would go about patenting things and yeah, you know, getting all that business side of things together so if you're into that that's that's kind of a that great, is cool yeah great podcast um it's called reptile and Emp- entrepreneur so um i feel like i'm forgetting a podcast of ours i don't know mm-hmm. <laughs> i don't want to leave oh the monitor podcast so those guys mm-hmm. are doing great um and uh yeah i think that's that's it i, think I mean that's it. uh definitely check out the teespring store and the patreon and then we have to do those uh, that monthly thing. I it it sucks because I I just transferred to a new position with my job and I start later, but I also end later, so I'm not gonna be able to join you guys for like carpets and coffee unless there's like a rare day off or an occurrence or something like that. Because you guys normally do that at like what five five thirty, maybe it's actually, like sooner. That. I think it's like fourish. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. So. All right. Well, Well, hopefully I'll be able to join you guys when I can. But yeah, but uh, we still have to do those monthly. uh, If you join the inland level of the Patreon, you get to go to our monthly little shows with me, Eric, Riley and Lucas. All together, we answer questions and just kind of talk carpets and stuff like that or whatever you guys want. Um, And uh, yeah, we're also looking at some new designs that we're going to throw up on the Teespring store soon. And a couple new things that we're going to chuck up there for you guys. But there's also Rogue merch, NPR merch, uh, EB Morelia merch, and Carpet Fest merch up on that website. So check that out. Yeah. So cool. Cool. Uh, Yeah. So Mm (laughs) MoreliaPythonRadio.com. That's it. And info at MoreliaPythonRadio.com. If you have questions, concerns, guest options, questions, or uh, you want to try to point a guest towards us, that's fine too. Uh, and yeah, so that's all we have for everybody tonight. So we'll catch everybody back here next week for some more Morelia Python radio. Good night.